there's a lot of combat possibilities to uncover in Final Fantasy 16, and without a doubt, the more time I put into the game, the more secret combat features I find myself discovering. I'm around my 30 hour mark, and I've compiled a quick list of advanced mid-game combat techniques that I wish I had known about sooner in my playthrough. So this video will be covering some of these techniques, like Torgal's precision attacks, double charge buffers, easy pairing, and more. There won't be any combat tips mentioned for iconic powers obtained past Titan in this specific video, but I do have a future video planned to cover the later icons. My name is Atano, and these are some mid-game combat techniques that you maybe and probably didn't even know about in Final Fantasy 16. Starting off, we've got Torgal and his precision attacks. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't really use Torgal that much when I started playing since his damage output is fairly low and I like to focus on my own combos and switching between my different iconic feats. But once I discovered his precise sick, I found myself working it into some of my combos. After Clive performs any finishing attack, like the finisher on a basic magic burst combo, you can input either Torgal's sick or ravage command to execute a precise sick. A precise sick will deal more damage than their standard counterpart and are really great for combo extensions. Clive can even use these precise commands after iconic abilities and even punishes. Plus to get your timing down for this command, you can hop into the Hall of Virtue and display a small infographic informing you when to properly execute Torgal's command. Torgal might not have the strongest attacks like I said, but it's definitely very satisfying when you can work his precision commands throughout more complex combo chains like this one. Charge up buffering is another secret combat technique that you should definitely be using. It dramatically speeds up the pace of combat so you're not waiting around for either your burning blade or charge magic to be ready. And you can buffer their charge up through practically any of Clive's abilities, or at least the ones I have unlocked so far in my playthrough. I would first master both burning blade and charged magic in the skill tree to decrease their charge up time, making these next few tips far easier. To buffer either a burning blade or charged shot, hold down their respective inputs during the animation of another ability like lunge. By the time Clive finishes his lunge, your charge up should be finished. But if you're unsure, you can always check the ability UI in the bottom right corner, which indicates if they are charged. Iconic abilities also work as a buffer, Garuda's Wicked Wheel and Titan's Wind Up especially, since the longer the attack is, the more time you have for your charge up. But the easiest way I'd recommend practicing the buffer would be with Punish. When Clive executes a Punish, hold the respective input button instead of just pressing Pressing it. Clive will quickly charge up a burning blade that can be used directly after the punish or during to fully cancel it. Canceling is great for avoiding the recovery time of a punish to keep up the pace of combat. But if you decide to save the burning blade for use directly after, keep in mind that some punishes will knock the enemy out of reach for the burning blade to connect. But a neat trick you can do to safeguard yourself from this is by double buffering a burning blade and charged magic shot. This way Clive has a backup attack that can reach enemies if if you think the punish will knock them out of his reach. Clive can then phoenix shift towards the lifted enemy and use that burning blade you had initially buffered. Next is Ramu and he's one of the icons I feel gets a bit ignored since his iconic feat Blind Justice is pretty underwhelming to say the least, but he has some pretty slept on abilities that I'd recommend mastering in the skill tree, that way you can equip them on any icon and avoid Blind Justice taking up a slot in your loadout. Pile Drive is one and it's such a feel good ability that deals some solid damage as well as increases the recovery time for enemies knocked down by it. But Lightning Rod is my personal favorite, it seems pretty straightforward at first use, but it can can be used in some unique ways to increase its effectiveness. For starters, once the rod is placed next to an enemy, Clive can start attacking and they won't get knocked back from his finishers. The blast from the lightning rod will essentially hold the enemy in place for quite a long time. However, my favorite feature of the lightning rod is that you can re-trigger the ability to have Clive reposition the rod during combat, making it easier to move between various enemies if you don't feel like luring or pulling them to the rod's existing position. However, luring the enemy to the rod's location with taunt 
is very beneficial because if the enemy strikes the rod, it will deal increased damage on the explosion versus when Clive strikes it himself. This is perfect for larger enemies as the larger the attack hitbox is, the more likely they are to strike the rod themselves. Clive can even lock onto the lightning rod and fire magic shots at it from a distance or even better, command Torval to attack it at the same time to further increase the number of explosions resonating from the rod. Furthermore, you should always try to have a lightning rod placed next to a fully staggered enemy because it's essentially free damage. Now, I want to talk briefly about willpower and which of these earlier icons are best at dealing it. In attacks, willpower is indicated by this star rating here on the right, while the left star rating indicates an ability's damage power. Garuda's Gouge and Aerial Blast are respectively 4 and 5 star rated for willpower, and they're easily the fastest ways to deplete an enemy's will bar, or at least before you obtain some of the later iconic powers. So while Garuda might not have the strongest damage outputs, she makes up for it in speed and willpower. But an even easier way to break an enemy's will is to combine the previously mentioned Ramu's Lightning Rod with Garuda's Gouge. This combination melts through an enemy's will bar in just seconds. On the other hand, Titan's abilities may not be ideal for depleting will, but are instead intended for dealing raw damage. Both his upheaval and wind-up abilities deal extremely high damage, but have a long wind-up time to charge them to their maximum potential. Plus, to get the most damage out of them, you're required to release the input button when the marker is within the red zone. But there's a secret way to avoid the charge up time altogether for upheaval, and that's by using it in the air. The higher Clive is when activating upheaval, the more damage it will deal. It does max out at a certain height, and what this exact height is, I do not know. But what I do know is that using Garuda's Wicked Wheel on the ground and then executing upheaval directly afterwards gives you the maximum damage output possible with upheaval. And it's the exact same amount of damage that upheaval deals when used on the ground with a precise execution. Using upheaval in the air is definitely the most satisfying and coolest way to end any air combo. Titan's block is also super feel good and can deal 3 follow up attacks on any precision block. It's essentially an easier version of Clive's basic parry, so take advantage of it if you're having trouble mastering the parry. However, I do have one essential tip if you want to get better at mastering this parry. We already know you can parry with Clive's basic melee attack along with both lunge and down thrust. Burning Blade, however, has a larger and longer lasting hitbox, which starts at the initial downswing all the way to its fiery explosion, so inherently it's easier to parry with. Plus, if the parry is accidentally missed, Clive won't be staggered as he'll be locked into the animation of Burning Blade. He'll still receive damage, however, but if you have Ifrit's Will of the Wikes activated, Clive can avoid taking this damage altogether. This is another solid ability that has a lot of undiscovered potential. I'm still learning more about this ability in particular, but you can use it along with Ramu's Lightning rod to stack on additional damage against fully staggered enemies or even with Garuda's gouge to deplete an enemy's will bar at a faster rate. It's essentially free damage in close quarters and provides invulnerability against a number of enemy attacks, so try to have it activated as often as possible. And those were some advanced combat tips that you may not have known about in Final Fantasy 16. If you already knew about those, props to you, and if there's something that I didn't cover that you think would be important for other players, leave a comment down below letting us know. That's a wrap for this video, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. And lastly, as always, thanks for tuning in today. I'll see you all in the next one.